2000 silhouette, but this is a common 3.4 that a lot of people have. Um, today what we're doing is we're doing a thermostat. Uh, we're having a situation where it just doesn't get hot. And it's, you know, what I found, the EGR will start clogging up. This engine don't run hot enough and drink a lot of fuel. Um, one thing that's interesting to note, you know, there's the housing that you got to get off the upper throttle, or upper thermostat housing has got to come off. But unique to this design, yes, this exhaust manifold's got to come off. So today what we're going to show you is how to get the exhaust shield off for the exhaust crossover pipe. That's probably the hardest part of this job next to getting the water out, but I'm going to go ahead and let my son do this assembly on this one. We're going to start here at the upper manifold. should probably get this hose out of the way so people can see. We'll do that right now. First thing you're going to want to get at is going to be these two bolts right here. That's going to get the shield off. There's a lot of little bolts, so make sure you use a tray. Here, there's probably back shield bolts. Here it is. Now, the other two bolts you got to get at are kind of a bitch. They're at the firewall. I really don't have any good way to show you. Okay, so there's the exhaust bolts you got to get off. They did make it nice, though, if you do have to pull a tranny. I mean, to make it easy to get the crossover. I've seen some where you've actually got to pull the front manifold off to actually get to the crossover. So, we're lucky there, but... Anyway, we're getting to the crossover, so we're going to fight with that next. Unfortunately, I can't really show you the procedure just because it's just a royal pain in the butt. But, yeah, you undo. There's a hose you have to undo. It's your main crossover, the heated passage. Took that off. Uh, don't forget on the, when you take the coolant line out, that the O-ring at the bottom does not fall out or yeah, go into you... the motor because that's a straight down passage into the water pump. And make sure you also get, have this hole covered with like a rag or tape or tape something. something. Alright, well let's get the seat shield off and then we'll show you the thermostat housing next. Okay, one thing that we found is we got this little kitty corner hole. I'm going to try to zoom in and show you. But there's three flange bolts that have to come off. We're getting those now. Fortunately, there's really no good way to show you. So I'm just going to do it. Okay, that one's off. Okay, so there's two little dinky bolts you got to get out this cover to get thermostat housing off. Well, I call it thermostat cover, but... Mm, it's thermostat housing. But thermostat assembly, however the literature reads. They change the parts because some of the parts are interchangeable between the Oldsmobiles and Chevys. Sure. Okay, well, what's behind door number one? Ew. That's that cool. It's gross. Okay, so as you can see, another thing I want you to note, it's an O-ring. It is not a thermostat gasket, so... <laughs> You're gonna have to get a screwdriver to do it. Uh, don't get too rough with it. There you go. You left the O-ring on there? No, the O-ring is supposed to take out. There you go, you're And if you pull slowly, you won't have to sand anything. Or... You're going to do a little light surface sanding. Well, yeah, but you won't have to, area. like... See how as I'm pulling it off, I'm keeping it still. And then I pull it off with my finger. Nice. So, this, we're getting rid of this. This, we're getting rid of that. Alright, so now we're going to drain and clean and we'll be back with you and we're going to get all the prep done. Right. Okay, being that this is a very tight compartment, I don't have a lot of room to show you guys step by step, but this is a O-ring gasket with the thermostat which we had showed when we are taking it off. What I like to do is take a little bit of uh, blue, I use Mega Blue from O'Reilly's, I like it a lot better than the Permatex, it seems to seal a lot better, but as you can see, and I'll put an arrow now, I don't put it on the actual o-ring what I do is I seal the gap between the o-ring and the housing where a leak could develop also for those of you who are studying for your ASE you will also note that it does state in the instructions to use RTV whenever possible just so you reduce your risk of comebacks I don't like comebacks comebacks to me is warranty work warranty work doesn't pay never has never will so
Okay, and it's going to be very loosely sitting in there, so you just kind of switch hands or switch gears or whatever you prefer. And you put your bolt in. Finding the bolt hole is always interesting. <laughs> but once you get in there, it's normally not too bad. And you don't want to tighten down the first bolt all the way, you know, just kind of get it snug, but make sure that the uh, thermostat housing can still uh, kind of rustle around because uh, as you saw with that thermostat, there uh, was an adjustable uh, size, about uh, there's a there's a an slip slip in the thermostat housing, and it's about that much. So if you can't move your top bolt, uh, for one, it's too tight, and it shouldn't be that tight, and you won't be able to get your second bolt on. All right. Once you kind of get it to the point where both bolts are tight, you get your torque wrench. You make sure inch pounds reader. See, it's very small, and it'll say inch pounds. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, during reassembly, you do want to note that you need to mount your exhaust manifolds first. And I'll show you the mounting flange. You got to do that first before you put your heat shield on. Failure to do that, you're not going to be able to get this thing back together. Fortunately, we couldn't really record getting this back flange. Um, it's just, it's a nightmare. But, I will tell you, if you get creative and you use some extensions, you can get at them go through the little holes right there. I'm going to zoom in now so you can see. That's one of the exhaust bolts you got to get to and there's three. Now it is easy but hard. Hard getting to it, easy to get the bolts off. Also torque on these is 18 foot pounds. Do use anti-seize. Do not use any Loctite. You'll be cussing if you have to be the next guy that tears this thing apart. We're going to continue on with the assembly. So we're slowly getting this beast back together. Heat shields back on. We haven't quite done the water side of the service yet. We're just trying to get the exhaust reassembled. Our goal here, though, is to do it with simple tools. Do it inside of a simple garage. As you can see, you know, nothing special. But we're just two guys who love automotive and like helping people. And this lady has definitely been taken for a ride on this van as far as some repair work is done. But we're getting her one step at a time. One thing you might have to do is bend the shield a little bit. <laughs> I, I feel like. A little bit's an understatement. Uh, get your bolt in, you'll be good. But it's the part I enjoy. I, I prefer the uh, uh, reassembly than the disassembly. Just saying. That's an understatement. Right. Okay, that is staying where that is. <laughs> Sometimes. You gotta get creative on this car. I mean, the bolts and the placement of things, though, it looks like it's well thought out. It's not. It's not. <laughs> Things that work on paper don't necessarily work in reality. I've learned that lesson. I love engineers because they're the people who say certain things can't get done. And, and me and Cav here are like type of people that figure those things out and figure out how to get them done. No engineering degree, just common sense, really. There's one tube that's going to be a pain in the ass to get back down to that rear vent tube. No, it won't. just need some Vaseline. Prison rules. Prison rules, huh? I don't think they got Vaseline. That's your heated bypass, so in the wintertime, your throttle body don't freeze up with ice. Fun. Put 
bolt, your eight millimeter bolt. You've really got to stop doing that. There it is. Well, I just put petroleum jelly on my hands. Prison rules. And this only requires about eight pounds of torque. Okay, as you see, my bolt stops. Just. And as you can see, my hand is at the head, not at the end of the wrench, it's at the head. And that's about nine pounds. I did a pound over just because the fact is it is a coolant passage. Good, where's that bolt go? Okay. Now this bolt, where does this bolt go? Well, it's, body it's side. always the bolt that everybody forgets about from the throttle body bracket. Right? And that holds your coolant passage. Yeah, don't let that flop in the wind. I'll put an arrow now to the thing you don't want to flop in the wind. Let's see if I can get it. Shot of that. Nope. Oh, Tighten it right there. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. And what ends up happening is if you don't have, see? That's not good. Yeah, it's a 13 head size millimeter bolt. And you do want to use Loctite on this because it's not a locking washer or doesn't have a uh, washing lock nut. And this bolt doesn't require much torque. About so it stops. About right there. All right. Well, she's all back together. We're going to go through the bleed procedure, which, you know, is something that does definitely need to be noted. Um, one thing that's funny about these cars is when you take the radiator cap off, um, this thing will gush fluid for quite some time. It stores a lot of fluid. It's got a rear HVAC unit, so it literally pumps fluid from the front of the motor all the way back and back up. And it will develop one hell of an air pocket. So you'll notice GM has two air bleeders for that purpose. The first one, you have your second one. Right there. So we're gonna use those two as we're filling it. And other than that, this job is done. Um, some of the symptoms we had, obviously, when she's going down the road, coolant temperature dropped. Um, I have to say, the smart son, the smart guys that worked on this last, decided to replace a throttle, or excuse me, coolant temp sensor instead of the thermostat to fix a gauge that wasn't working. So, yeah, never a dull moment. In the automotive industry. All right, well, we're going to get this thing bled, tested out, and we'll do a first start and drive like we normally do. And other than that, we thank you for watching. Uh, if you like what we've done, click like, subscribe, and we'll get more of these jobs on uh, YouTube as soon as we can. Thanks for watching. We're in the process of doing the burp. Um, you want to make sure you put a little bit more coolant in here than you need. Um, eventually, it's going to suck some out. So you can see the bubbles that are already escaping the motor. This is going to take about an hour of starting it up, hitting the bleeder screws, getting the air out of the system. Failure to do this is going to leave you a broken motor. Don't do that. Don't be that guy. But when you know you've got it first, this pipe will be hotter than this hose when you start it up from cold to hot. This should always be last. When you're burping it, this will always be first because it's air in the system. you got to get all that air out, all this stuff and the rear cooling unit all the way in the back. So I'm not going to sit here and run the camera, but I'm just showing you guys that the coolant procedure on here is very, very precise. I tell you to do that, you hit the bleeder screws, you have your eight nodes by the way, you will pop cameras motor. Don't do that.